Hello. Let's talk about combustion air. In your fuel gas code, if you'll flip to section 304, you will notice combustion, ventilation, and dilution air listed right below here. At the bottom of this page, if you'll take a look and read through this section, you will find the requirements for us uh, as heating and air technicians to install air for combustion. Anything that burns fuel has to have air for combustion. So furnaces, gas furnaces, oil furnaces, gas logs, everything uh, that uses a fossil fuel, we will need to make sure we have proper ventilation airflow for the proper combustion of that unit. So if we take a look here, we'll notice in section 304.5, right here, and I know the camera is a little bit uh, uh, unstable here, but bear with me. Uh, the standard method, it says the minimum required volume shall be 50 cubic feet per 1,000 BTU of the appliance input rating. So if you have 50 cubic feet per 1,000 BTU of area, or excuse me, volume, wherever that equipment is located, then you meet the minimum requirement and you will not have to open, uh, provide openings for combustion of that appliance. However, if you do not meet 50 cubic feet per 1,000 BTU, then you have to provide air for combustion. So a simple way to look at that, and I've got a little example here, is if you had a 100,000 BTU furnace, take your input, divide it by 1,000, 50 cubic feet per 1,000. Of course, that'll leave you with 100. Multiply that by your 50 cubic feet per 1,000, and we have 100 of those thousands. So we need 5,000 cubic feet to provide sufficient combustion air for this appliance. If we fall under that, then we have to provide openings. All right, so we could do the math of the location this piece of equipment was in. If we are below this number, we need to provide openings. If you'll flip your page and follow along, you'll notice we have many different examples of openings for combustion air. So if we go over here and take a look, 304.5, uh, this picture shows two openings. And what this is showing, and it refers you to the section 304.5.3, this is showing us pulling combustion air from an adjacent room or another part of the house. So if this is your chosen method of providing combustion air, the way these are sized, we'll visit the section it refers us to, is we must provide one square inch opening per 1,000 BTU input of the total input in that room. However, should our number come out less than 100 square inches, the minimum for this application would be 100 square inches. Another important note, each opening, you must have two, each opening shall be within 12 inches of the floor and 12 inches of the ceiling. All right, so if we go down and take a look, two openings, one within a foot of the ceiling and one within a foot of the floor. This, each of these, either one or both, could be actually in the ceiling or in the floor. They do not have to be off the floor or below the ceiling as this picture indicates. Okay, so determine your BTU input, divide it by 1,000, and basically that's your square inches for each opening. Minimum 100. That is not often the method we use. More often than not, we're using the methods shown over here in 304.6. This method shows us pulling air from ventilated attics, crawl spaces, uh, things of that nature. And once again, we're coming within 12 inches of the ceiling, 12 inches of the floor. And here's the difference with our size requirements. If we are pulling air from a location where we have uh, outdoor air available, like an attic or a crawl space with vents, then these openings can be one square inch per 4,000 BTU. And again, the chart references us to the requirement listed above, one square inch per 4,000. So determine your input, divide that input by 4,000, 
multiply it by one, and that basically would provide your square inch requirement for each opening. That opening must be, again, directly communicating with the outdoors as is specified in your textbook. <clears throat> this is vertical. If you choose to go horizontal, the same size opening requirements will suffice, provided your exterior openings are to the outdoors. So again, we're going vertical, one square inch per 4,000. We could go horizontal as long as the outdoor wall, and it's showing right here, is an exterior wall. Okay. Now, if we must, and this could happen, but it's not likely to occur, but it could. If we had to pull air horizontally through another room, as this picture indicates, then what we would have to do is size each opening to one square inch per 2,000 BTUs. All right, so we would add up the total BTUs, divide it by 2,000, multiply that by one, and that would determine each opening size. Uh, and of course, in this scenario, that would require larger openings than if we were to install the ventilation or combustion air openings through an exterior location. As you read through your text, you'll notice there's some other options available, but these are the most common. Uh, a lot of other details are listed in your code book. Uh, these cannot be screened off in an attic to prevent insulation from covering up that uh, combustion air opening. And something I'll mention from working in the field over the years is many times when these floor combustion air openings are provided, customers see those and they wonder why they have an opening in the floor where they can see the ground by looking through this uh, register or grill. Uh, and oftentimes customers will cover these up with rugs, carpets, etc. So that needs to be uh, known to our customers that this must be open in order to provide combustion air to these appliances. Today, with the furnaces we have, direct vent appliances, uh, two pipe systems and so forth, 90 plus units, uh, where we're pulling air for combustion in to the equipment through piping, none of this would apply because those are direct vent and we're not burning air in those appliances from the environment they're located in. Hope this helps out. If you have any questions, please send me an email and we'll be glad to help you out. Thank you.